Good afternoon. Here we are at Flathead Lake, Western Montana. This is Skidoo Bay. As you can see, the water level appears rather low. And it is because uh, there is a dam on this lake and they actually let the lake level drop about 10 feet over the winter to accommodate the spring runoff from all these beautiful mountains that we have all around us. As you can see, there's our boat sitting on the rail that goes right up into our boat house. This is where we keep our boat over the winter. And I've been busy with a project adding a limit switch to our boat rail. Come inside, I'll show you. So here's the end, the upper end of the rail. You can see that there's a winch with a big electric motor and that raises and lowers the boat down the rail so we can easily put the boat in the water or put it away in the boathouse. This is the control box uh, for the rail. When it's put back together, we have this little panel and it's just a power on off and a raise and lower push button. The rail also has a keychain remote so that I can activate the rail from the boat while I'm in the water. What I want to show you right now is this little jumper that has two positions. Notice it says latch and momentary. And what that does in momentary mode, one must press the button on the keychain remote right here and you have to hold the button because it's a momentary contact and the boat moves so slow that your, your thumb starts to get sore after a few minutes. So I changed it to latch mode and the way latch mode works is you press the button once and let go and the boat moves in whatever direction you have pressed the button and it keeps moving until you press the button a second time and then it stops. Now this mode clearly comes with some additional risk because if the uh, operator were to get distracted or walk away, the boat is moving and if it moves all the way to the end, there's a possibility of bad things happening. However, the system accommodates a limit switch. Notice down here, right below the, the um, latch and momentary mode jumper, we have a connector, a three position connector. It accommodates a limit switch, an upper limit switch and a lower limit switch. Notice the connectors limit up, common, and limit down. When this rail was installed about 12 years ago, my buddy Mike Anderson, who I bought this rail from, installed this upper limit switch. It's what they call a wobble stick. No matter which way you move this little springy thing, it activates the limit, it shuts off the motor. So that way the boat can't come too far, possibly ripping out the winch, damaging the motor, damaging the rail. Certainly nothing could, good could come of it if the boat were to keep moving all the way to the end. However, the lower limit switch poses a whole new set of challenges because it's at the bottom end of the rail and when the lake is full, that means it's sitting in about eight feet of water. So clearly if a lower limit switch was to be added, it would have to be a waterproof switch. And that's exactly what this multi-day project uh, was all about. Um, 
the 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 uh, really the point that I want to make is that once I changed the operation of this lift from momentary mode to latch mode, it became ever so clear that a limit switch was mandatory if we were to avoid bad things happening. Um, Momentary mode, the risk is much less because all one has to do is let go of the button and the boat stops. But in latch mode, though more convenient, uh, limit switch, absolutely necessary. So let's take a walk down to the bottom end of the rail. I, I do want to point out this gray PVC conduit. This is part of the project because the limit switch, which is all the way down at the bottom end of the rail, the wire from that switch needs to come up here and connect to that control box. That thick yellow cable that you see is a water resistant, thick PVC jacketed three conductor cable. Goes inside a little short piece of conduit there, comes out, goes into this piece of conduit, which is fastened to the rail system about an inch away from the rail itself. There's the other rail. We did have to leave a gap right here because this is where the garage door for the boathouse comes down. We have these little flippers to flip up the rail so that the, the uh, garage door closes all the way to the ground. Um, and it will just compress this cable. There's a thick rubber seal on the bottom of the door and it just closes right on top of that cable. It's not a problem. And we'll flip this back down. Once again, inside the conduit, fastened one inch away from the rail, all the way down to the bottom of the bottom of the rail where I have the boat right now. Looks kind of funny sitting on dry land like this, but again, when we're in season, I'd be standing right here in about five feet of water and right here in about eight feet of water. So we could see the bottom of the rail. You could see the pulley where the cable reverses direction and goes back the other way. Basically one end of the cable connects to the back end of the dolly that the boat sits on. The other end of the cable connects to the front end of the dolly. So the dolly is pulled both ways, up and down. It's being pulled by the winch, depending on which direction the, the, uh, the motor is going. So here we have the conduit. Comes to an end right there. We have the, yellow, the other end of the yellow cable. A waterproof splice was made onto the switch. And right here is the waterproof limit switch. Not sure if you can hear the click, but every time I depress this spring steel actuator, The switch clicks and it does indeed stop the motor. So I'm going to demonstrate this by starting the boat moving down the rail. I have to get a little closer because the radio signal not strong enough to travel this far. Okay, the boat is now traveling down to the end we're going to watch what happens when the back of the dolly goes right over that limit switch. Stop the motor. The dolly came to a complete stop and that's exactly what we want to happen. This was one successful project. Let's do it again. Let's see if I can get the boat moving forward. There we go. And I'll 
that'll stop it. Let's see if we can get it started again. Okay, boat is traveling toward the back end. Perfect. Works every time, which is what we want to have happen. Okay. Let's go back up. Get the boat moving. Put it away. Show you how the uh, the winch looks and works when it's moving. Notice we have slack in the cable. That's normal. Um, the cable that is pulling the boat back up is taut. The boat weighs 5,000 pounds, so. There's quite a bit of weight there. It's completely normal for the other cable that's going down to that pulley all the way at the end to, to have some slack. You can hear the motor running. This gearbox, we're gearing down from, I don't know, a couple thousand RPM to maybe 100 RPM develops a lot of torque when you gear it down that much. Okay, that's all for now. Okay, here comes the boat. Half of it is in the boathouse now. I'm going to let it go all the way up to the limit switch, this wobble stick. I'll show you how that works. Again, big difference between the upper limit switch and the lower limit switch is the lower one needs to be waterproof. This one does not. And this switch is, in fact, not waterproof. Now, you can see where that uh, front panel of the dolly is heading right for the wobble stick. Boom. Pushes the wobble stick, shuts the motor right off. Notice that the... Uh, the new conduit that was added to carry that yellow waterproof cable is clamped to a cross member, every cross member. These rail sections are 10 feet in length. There are 13 of them in total from the very bottom to the very top inside the boathouse. Notice the door is now closed. Uh, and there are three cross members on every 10 foot section. You could see a joint right there. So there's one, two, three. So 13 times three is 39 cross members. And every single cross member has a clamp holding the conduit. I don't want that conduit to move, whether it's from wave action in a storm or a big piece of driftwood hitting it. I think this will probably last a while. So uh, we have um, Ryan Zimmerman, a local contractor, is going to be here next week to move that gravel bar. That's, that was formed by a storm last fall. Normally the rail is... sitting on top of the gravel bar and it's not normally um, halfway buried as it appears to be now. I hand shoveled that out of there to install the limit switch. That was the most difficult part 
of this project by far. That was a lot of gravel I shoveled and I was sweating bullets. But hey, exercise is good for you. So, just wanted to show you Remember I said I had to leave a gap where the uh, cable goes underneath the garage door. You can see that right there. That rubber seal just closes right down on the cable. Completely unfazed. Just like the wire ropes that uh, move the dolly up and down. The door just closes down on that. No problem. Over and out.